after the auto track, it's time to add our own trackers. We're going to do this with the user track node. With the user track node, we're going to add information that the auto track didn't want to cover or couldn't cover. So let's see how to do that. Once the auto tracker node had been cleaned up, I can go back to the node panel and under the tracking, I can add a user track. The reason I'm going to also use a user track is because I would like to add a couple of more trackers in features in which the auto track failed to pick up. So under the user track, I'm going to click on the create in order to create my own manual trackers. And I'm going to try to pick up areas in which I think have a great contrast and a potential for 2D tracking. I'm going to take a look at the blue channel, which is pretty dark. And I can look at the green channel, which is OK, as well as the red channel. And I think that with the green channel, I have the most contrast. So under the parameters of this specific tracker, I'm going to leave the channels on the red and blue turned off. And the only channel that is going to be tracked is going to be the green one. So I am on frame 33. I'm going to track forward, take my tracker back to frame 33 and track backwards. And now I can change the color of the first user track because I would like to differentiate them from the auto trackers. I'm going to choose this pink color and now I can click on create. I'm going to create a new tracker and I might even create a tracker right over here. Change a bit of the pattern area as well as the search area and the same deformations are going to be activated. Failure threshold 0.5. There is good contrast in this area, so I don't think I should turn it off to the green channel. Or maybe we should. We just keep it on the green channel. And now we are on frame zero, so we can just track forward. So I'm going to continue and add more manual trackers that will cover areas in which the automated tracker failed to do. And that will be in order to ensure that I have enough tracking information to solve a good camera. So let's stop the video here and we'll be right back. So I added about five manual trackers and now I want to bring in the information from the auto track. So that's going to be very easy. All I have to do is click on the fetch and I have the list of all the automatic trackers and I'm going to click on all. As you can see, the colors of the auto track are the default yellow. And now it's easy for me to differentiate between the manual trackers and the rest of the trackers, which are auto trackers. So my footage is pretty much covered and I hope that this is enough information to solve a proper camera. Sometimes you might have cases in which you get trackers that are concentrated in one area and it is okay to take the marquee tool and get rid of those trackers because sometimes too much 2D information might cause your camera solution to fail. So I'm going to take these to delete. There's also this one which I might delete and the rest of these guys look pretty okay. So now that we're done with the 2D tracking, we can go and solve the camera. So you might have guessed by now that the next step would be to use the camera solver. We did added more information with the user track and now it's time to solve the camera. So let's go to the next video and do that.